I've been very disappointed um, with the announcement of the gravitational wave um, discovery, uh, more specifically how it's being represented um, um, or misrepresented, um, and some of the lack of critical thinking and lack of science, to, to, to be blunt. Um, so first off, the thing that should jump out at everybody who's seen this is that there a lot of people are misusing the term direct detection. They're observing what a laser is doing, and then they're inferring what caused the laser to do that. That is virtually the textbook definition of an indirect detection, an indirect measurement. And there are many people who are incorrectly calling it a direct detection. It is not. Um, I'm also not very happy with the um, lack of coverage about the issues of relativistic simultaneity. You can look that up in other videos if you like, but the short version is that when you have a relativistic speed gravitational wave, a relativistic speed laser, and the two ends, which are much, much slower, you have different reference frames. And which observer? This wall is an observer, this wall is an observer, the light as an observer, the gravitational wave as an observer, the detector as an observer, etc. Um, which ob observer, what they will observe, is not, they won't necessarily agree. There's issues with relativistic simultaneity. Um, and it's not a s simple matter that isn't being really well covered in this case. Um, I'm also not happy with the um, uncertainty being kind of brushed under the rug. Um, they're claiming a very high amount of sigma certainty about a very tiny one ten thousand, you know, less than a ten thousandth the diameter of a proton distance. Um, they don't have the ability to detect that precisely where this end is. And if it had moved, then that could explain it with no gravitational wave whatsoever. They don't have that level of precision to know exactly where this end is. And if it moved that much, they don't need any gravitational wave at all to explain it. They don't have that level of precision to know exactly where that photon of light is when it was emitted there or there at these two points, which is what they use to measure the distance. Light moving for a certain period of time from point A to point B. They don't have those things to that same one ten thousand. The electrons are moving. This isn't a static stationary thing. The time it takes light to travel from here to here, this electron can move. They don't know precisely where these things are at exactly the moment that it was here and exactly the moment it was here. And then the problem is that there's a transition, there's a time period between that. And that kind of gets us back into that simultaneity thing that they're talking about, that this distance, they want to say that this over here, this over here, the light in between, as it travels between that time, that changing time period and the gravitational wave, that there's a simultaneous thing, that these things don't change, but we know they do. That where this is, is changing. And where this is, is changing over the time period it takes a light to move. It's changing, and they're not really discussing or addressing that. Um, they kind of brush under the rug the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. They know the momentum of the light, and they know the position of the light to a higher degree of than the uncertainty principle would allow them to. And they try to claim that they can get away with this, uh, knowing that the cat's alive or dead at the same time, um, by, you know, uh, tailoring the light a certain way, um, but it doesn't get them to what their claims are. Um, and I wish they would, that would be better addressed. Um, and the, uh, detectors and the entire apparatus is of course on the earth on its axis spinning, moving, orbiting around the sun. The sun's moving through the galaxy, the galaxy's moving off and we don't, and they don't have a map of what the curvature of the space time is that the detector is moving through over that time period. You don't need a gravitational wave if the space-time itself's curvature changes by that one ten, less than one ten thousandth the diameter of a proton amount. Um, and they don't know if it was just curvature of space-time without it being a gravitational wave. Um, and et cetera. I mean, I can keep going on. But the short version is, is just this. There's a few of those things I wanted to mention. Um, I'm just ultimately, I'm disappointed with the poor coverage of the media, the 
there should be more critical thinking and critical questioning from the scientific community. There should be more countering points going back and forth. Um, there should be more, you know, explaining some of those intricacies and so forth. Um, and I don't see that. And that is what's fundamentally, you know, disappointing. Um, 